producer and a reporter at KPBS, and you scooped my story because I was going to say that I talked to Tony um, a while back. I did a post on the DeMaio campaign's relationship with the media, and he said that he went to that press conference because he wasn't able to get an interview. I think just a general interview, not even about those specific things, but he'd done a story in the primary on the race for the LA Times. He wanted to do a story on the general election. He couldn't get an interview with the Mayo because they didn't like his first story, is what he said. And so that's why he went to the press conference. I don't know why he waited 10 days to then do the story. Question for the three journalists in the room. Uh, some of you kind of got this a little bit, but and not to use too much words to, describe, to answer this question, but how do you trust and verify uh, uh, sources when the allegations are what they were in this case, and it's not a Donna Fry or a Marco Gonzalez saying what happened? You mean how do you verify the sources who they are? Or, no, not or necessarily what their they're background, saying. but what they're saying. Correct. I mean, I still think we don't know for sure. I mean, do we know yet who is telling the truth and who is lying in this situation? I mean, it's clear somebody is, and I still don't know who it is. So, I mean, you? <laughs> no, uh, in, in, a, in a sense, and I'll, this is pretty easy. Uh, Tony made it easy. Uh, we. I'm sure we weren't at the point or near the point where we would do something on it, whether we would do something at all, but you've got the candidate responding and acknowledging all this has taken place. Uh, it still doesn't lend veracity to one story or the other, but that really becomes news then. That's different than some person coming out and, and you know, saying something that people don't know or his story might not add up or, or might just have a whole lot of questions. So, like I said, in a, in a sense, and it's, it may be an easy fallback, but that kind of forced our hand. Um, for our part, we also had a second story of a second ex-campaign staffer who was accusing DeMaio of uh, harassment. And in that case, I mean, we just tried to do as much reporting as we can on who this person is, doing background checks on him, talking to him. Some of it is... You know, I was having conversations with him. How did he sound? Did he sound like he was lying? I mean, that's not going to tell you 100%, but I feel like you can at least get a sense from someone when you're talking to them. Um, the, Justin Harper, who I, I talked to, had emails from him in the campaign showing that he had left on good terms. He had this recommendation letter. And so in that way, it made him seem more credible to me that he hadn't been fired, we had proof that he had left, and so there was maybe less of a sense of um, this person has an axe to grind and it's going to make up stories like this. Um, but at first he wasn't willing to put his name to the story, and we said, and that lasted about a week, where we said, you know, we're not going to be able to publish anonymous allegations, I would go back to him, talk to him about it, he said, you know, okay, I don't want you to use my name, and then weekend right before the election, he ended up saying, you can use my name. And so at that point, we moved forward on the story. Oh, I think you hit the nail on the head that a lot gets said and shared in every campaign, in any campaign, but you report it out, right? So with that as the backdrop for this next question, a lot of people call this campaign one of the nastiest campaigns in the history of campaigns, a dirty campaign. So, question for all five of you, was it? Or is this just the politics of now? Start with Dave. No, I'll start. I'll go with, right. I'll go with Adams Jefferson in 1800. <laughs> <laughs> this was an ugly race. This was definitely ugly. Um, having seen what Carl went through during the mayoral race, to a certain degree, we thought we saw it all. We thought we saw the dirty of dirty. We thought we saw gay baiting. We thought we saw a lot of things that were pretty just downright ugly. And then my first day on the job. First day, Dave, do you have any comment that uh, Carl DeMaio was uh, caught uh, behaving inappropriately in a bathroom? Excuse me? That was my first day on the job, having to uh, try to kill a story about a lie. The first lie in a series of, uh, of 
upstairs. Now, do I think it gets uglier from here? I don't know. But the question I have for journalists here is, will you let it get this ugly in the future? There are a lot of questionable facts about this race. And I realize that uh, there are some journalists in this room who see that you know, there are questions on both sides that don't have clear answers. But the bigger question is, when you have certain doubts about a source, or potentially a source that you still haven't verified, and Claire, forgive me for, for bringing this up right now, have you been able to verify the person you talked to on the other end of the phone is actually Justin Harper? I'm glad that we're sharing this information that was previously on background. Yes, I mean, he had the emails that showed that he was the person who was fired from the campaign. He had the recommendation letter. When we first went to, can I? Yeah. 